In this video, I'm going to give my complete honest view of how this DLC is going to go down with strategy gamers. For those of you that don't know, Crusader Kings 3 is about to get its first significant expansion, which is known as Royal Court, and it's coming out in less than a month on the 8th of February. When Crusader Kings 3 came out last year, there was a lot of hype around it, and people were honestly quite happy with the game, so it therefore lived up to expectations, which was difficult given the high standards of Crusader Kings 2. However, Crusader Kings 3 is a bit bare boned at the moment in comparison to Crusader Kings 2. Given this fact, it's no wonder the active player base of Crusader Kings 3 has significantly declined, going from 48,000 active players at the start to just 12,000 now. It's not expected that there's a drop off, but maybe Powder isn't expected to be below most of their other games. So, will this expansion be able to revive Crusader Kings 3 and bring back its player base? And this is potentially the best DLC Paradox has ever released. Let's discuss it in this video. Have you ever wanted to see Shrek and Donkey be roleplayed in Crusader Kings 3? If this video gets over 100 subscribers, then I'm going to force Leif to play Donkey for a Crusader Kings 3 video. I have no idea how it's going to turn out. Firstly, let's go through some of the features of Royal Court. The vision of this expansion was to bring the medieval experience of court life to the game. When you think of a medieval fantasy series like Game of Thrones, you think of King's Landing and its iconic throne. You think of Winterfell and its cold, dark atmosphere. And you think of Ed Sheeran's singing, a true highlight of Game of Thrones. Anyway, perhaps the most interesting part of medieval history is the courtroom, and all its steals and scheming that goes on in it. This is something that's encapsulated us for decades, so maybe it's no wonder why Paradox wanted to add something like this into Crusader Kings 3. And it's perhaps one of the most innovative DLCs I've seen from Paradox for a while. You no longer need to imagine your characters making deals, you can see it all in game. Now let's go into detail about the courtroom. Thankfully, it won't be one default courtroom, and depending on the region you live in, it will be completely different. And Paradox have focused on four main art designs, which are West European, Mediterranean, Middle Eastern and Indian courts. They've gone into significant detail with each design, changing everything from the lighting, to the positioning of your banner, and really trying to make you feel immersed in the game. One interesting aspect to the courtroom is you can show off your artifacts you gain within the game, such as a Berserker Axe or a Chest of Valuables. I prefer to show off my Crusader Kings 2 hours, but oh well. You also have a throwback to Crusader Kings 2 minor titles, and now have a court position such as Food Taster, Jester, and of course, if you are playing in England, the prestigious Keeper of the Swans. Swans in England are still owned by the Queen today. There's also loads of specific bonuses that could be gained from having these court people, and the Jester can significantly reduce your stress. You also have the option to hold court, which is where your vassals come to and ask for help or various things that your medieval vassal desire, like more power or to stop a war. I personally like this aspect of it, and seeing the events happen visually is far more immersive than pop-ups we get now. Your courtroom will feed into the new mechanic of grandeur, which is a measurement of how amazing your court is, and it can give you benefits of renown and prestige. The other big update this expansion has given us is a complete overhaul of cultures. They are now far more important than before, and really can change your campaign. Cultures will find it easier to adopt certain traditions depending on where they're from. For example, if they are a culture of war, then warfare traditions are easy for them to pick up. Cultures also now have pillars, which are shown here, and range from the language they speak to the way in which they design buildings. The most anticipated part of this expansion, however, is a new hybrid culture system. A hybrid culture allows you to combine two cultures if there is a high enough acceptance between the two. A historical example of this is William the Conqueror who took over England and began to implement Norman culture within this Anglo-Saxon kingdom, and William spoke French at court and forced the Anglo-Saxons to accept their customs. If your culture and game no longer helps you, then it's probably best to switch over and it will definitely make your life easier with your vassals. Out of all the features, hybrid cultures will make campaigns different, and it will probably make the game a bit more replayable than it is now. 
Now let's have a chat about whether this DLC will be any good, and potentially worth purchasing, given all the information we have about it. I firstly want to make it clear that there's no doubt in my mind this DLC will make Crusader Kings 3 a better game. There's enough features and game-changing mechanics in the expansion to give you a better experience. Given the fact Paradox also delayed the release of this DLC by a few months, to make absolutely sure that there will be no glitches in game, which we all know had a significant impact on other Paradox games like Leviathan and EU4. I don't think this DLC will have any game boking bugs that would make the game unplayable, something Paradox are really keen to avoid nowadays. Having said all this though, I won't lie to you, I do have my concerns. As of now, you can pre-order this DLC for £24 or $32. US Some people might consider that quite high for a DLC, and are the features of a DLC really worth £24? As I've said before, some of the Royal Court features were based off Crusader Kings 2, like minor titles. As much as I like this expansion's features that make it very different to its predecessor, in some ways a lot of these features maybe should have been added into the base game. And if that did happen, we might not have seen a significant dip in active players, and a split in player base between the two Crusader King games. I'm also a little concerned about whether this DLC makes Crusader Kings 3 more replayable. In Crusader Kings 2, the DLC has absolutely made the game a hundred times better, with loads of interesting things added in, such as diseases and the old gods, making the pagans playable for the first time. Going back to Crusader Kings 3, once the novelty of 3D characters and the nice art designs of your courtroom wears off, do the features justify the price you have to pay for it? And does it really make the game that much better and way more replayable? This is something you have to decide for yourself, and your propensity to spend is heavily dependent on that. If you spend a large amount of time on Crusader Kings 3, then why not get it? But it might be more sensible to wait until there's a sale on the DLC, and therefore the price would be more reasonable. Overall though, I certainly think this expansion is a step in the right direction for Crusader Kings 3, and with more expansions on the way, I'm sure it can become more popular and build its community, maybe becoming even more relevant than a game like Europa Universalis 4. I haven't seen a community more hyped for this DLC, and even though they had to wait for a long time, I'm sure the community will enjoy it. EU4 DLCs don't really have the same hype around it anymore. What do you guys think though? Will the Royal Court expansion be any good? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, I'll be streaming over at Twitch when this was uploaded, and shout out to our Patreons, jdo 52 Kargan, and Henrique.